So our friends over Cyanogen are gearing up for their uh, big uh, marshmallow release of Cyanogen OS. Now, this is not to be confused with Cyanogen Mod, which is the open source version of Android uh, running Cyanogen. Rather, this is Cyanogen's OS, right? They're they're straight they're they're, they're branded OS that they're that they're uh, producing, um, and specifically within Cyanogen OS, the mods platform. Uh, Microsoft is actually actively involved out of the gate. Uh, they're building Skype, Cortana, OneNote, and Hyperlapse laps into the mods platform. And what this is actually is going to allow is going to is going to do is going to allow Cyanogen OS to be deeply integrated um, uh, with other uh, app developers. Um, so you could you know modify your dialer so it integrates Skype or TrueCaller. Or you can, you know, deeply integrate Cortana so that it gives voice commands embedded to the OS. Um, there's going to be a social lock screen replacement, um, and ultimately, uh, you know, Cyanogen OS 13 with this mod platform is going to be a way for developers uh, to deeply integrate with the app, their apps within the OS. Which, interestingly enough, is kind of the opposite of what Google's been doing with the current status of, of Android. Um, you know, they're you know they're doing their best to break them out. Uh, so it's really interesting to see the direction that Cyanogen is taking, and it's you know we were seeing that investment that Microsoft has made in Cyanogen come to pass by a deeper integration. CEO of Cyanogen, Kurt McMaster, who um, very has said a uh, lot outspoken. of yeah, is very outspoken. You remember it was like middle was it middle last year? No, it was January last January, where he said he wanted to take Android away from Google, and part of the reasoning, part of the part of what he was talking about there is building in functionality that we're used to Google rolling out because they have control of their platform to a certain degree and doing that on their own. Um, I don't know. Do you, I mean, and this is kind of, you know, obviously a big, a big example of that. This is certainly the direction that they're headed. What do you think? Is this a, a successful direction for Cyanogen? I think it's potentially very successful. So there has been demands uh, outside uh, the core fan base of the Nexus program and the stock Android program of an alternative competitor Android-based system. Mm -hmm. Amazon, in a way, tried with their own Fire phones and tablets. The tablets have been relatively successful, but the phones were a bit yeah. of a flop. A bit um, of a flop is underselling it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. that, was a, that was a big flop. I yeah. think that it's, it's a welcome thing. It's a good thing to have a slightly different platform sure. with tighter integ integrations with services other than Google's. Um, it also, if they have a separate app store, which is tr gains trust and creates a bit of competition in the marketplace in the apps distribution mm -hmm. uh, system, that would also be a, a good one. If you look at Asia, if you look at specifically China, where Google don't officially operate, uh, there's a very rich ecosystem of app stores and distribution channels, and each phone manufacturer and ROM developer has their own set of tightly integrated APIs with service providers. Mm -hmm. So companies other than Google, such as Baidu, uh, the WeChat Messenger service, and others. So I so think that for Western markets to move closer to that model will make it slightly more complex, but potentially better for users. Prices will go down. If users prefer Skype to maybe Hangouts, they'll get a better service on their devices. Will the Western market um, be welcoming to kind of the alternative? Or do you, do you think people just kind of don't care like, or, or don't know? They aren't necessarily aware of the fact that Cyanogen's here and it's not, you know, Google out of the box necessarily. It's Cyanogen. Well, for some people, there's they don't really care. Yeah. They don't buy a phone because it's Android. They buy a phone because it's a phone. Right. Or and because they will it's use Samsung. You know, exactly. Like, yeah. They'll use whatever is pre-installed on the device. Sure. Look at Samsung users using the Samsung App Store. Mm -hmm. It's not widely considered the, the main App Store, but in some places around the world, it's what people use more than Google Play or any other app store because it's the default one on the phone. Right. They trust Samsung more than others. Hmm. So whoever makes your phone, if you've bought a phone, you might trust whoever makes it to give you good apps yeah. or good services. Yeah, fair so enough. So I welcome this move from Cyanogen. I think it's a, a good thing. And also it brings on the competition heat to, to Google. 
for sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree with Mateo 100. percent I think that competition is good. I think choice is good. I think the whole you know the whole dream of the Android platform that that we embraced when it came out was the openness aspect of it. And so I, I think it's great to see you know CyanogenGen pushing the limits of what that means and and allowing you know Microsoft to support that. And you know we talked last week about the great work Microsoft's been doing on their apps. Um, it's 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 an option. I like I like seeing that as an option for consumers. Yep. Ultimately, if improvements get made, Google may take notice of it and integrate them into their own systems and their own services. That's true. They are no strangers to doing that yes. uh, when they see something they like and just kind of incorporating it eventually. Especially with cyanogen. Yeah, well, yeah, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough.